an overview of what we do in class. What I'm going to do is take you through just a, a student's experience in uh, a week, but then I'm also going to show you the projects we've done for the most part for the past uh, month and a half. So right now, if I go into Schoology, let's pick this class right here. I teach film, game design, and School of Rock, but the structure is the same for all the classes. I have an overview video each week that just gives kind of a general overview of what we're going to be working on. The background has the emphasis of what the students are working on while I'm in Zoom. They can see that the whole time because um, Linnell Burmark says that we lose focus within 60 seconds if we don't have a visual reminder of what we're trying to accomplish. And she's a visual literacy expert, so I kind of trust her process. Um, so I'm trying to model that here. If students are ever lost, they can watch the overview video. If they had technology problems and couldn't, meet, be, uh, couldn't make the Zoom meeting, they can watch this. Um, I also have other resources in our class folder. And I organize our weekly work by having the current week in its own folder. And the previous weeks are like this. Just wait for this to load. And for instance, what we did in week eight, I have an overview video of what we did. And then I have the assignment. And that's true for each week. So currently in week nine, if I click on this, you will see that it has uh, a note here about finishing stuff by Friday, uh, the overview video. In fact, let's just click on this so you can see it. So I have a, a weekly overview video, which is on the top of the class folder. And then for each week, I have other notes that help them get things done. Now, I just trying to remind them of the three things they need to complete by the end of Friday, I have an overview video of the specific assignment for that week. So um, not to be confusing, the overview video that's in the main folder is just a, the, the concepts, the bigger picture. And then the specific nitty gritty piece about how to use the blog is here. And that is related to the assignment directly below it. And so if students watch this, and again, if they miss the Zoom meeting, they can watch this and it will give them the details. When they click on the assignment, um, and I remind students of this all the time, is you have an overview of the assignment, you have description of what they're supposed to do, and I start with verbs. The verbs are there to tell them to copy and paste, complete, and then delete and publish. So they, you know, they can read these phrases, but when they click on this link, it takes them over to the blog post. Now, what you're seeing on your screen right now is zoomed way out so you can see it from a distance. But essentially, the blog is the documentation of the student's work and success with various components for the class. It's a journal, and that's how they hand in work. Everything starts from Schoology, and then they ends up in their blog. And their blog is hosted by EduBlogs. It's a only education organization. I mean, that's all they do is education. And they do a really nice job of creating a professional portfolio of work for the, with the students through a WordPress blogging structure. So what you see here is week nine, this thing acts as a worksheet. Students copy this whole thing into their blog post. And I'm showing you that it's, it's fairly long and it's fairly complicated in the sense that it has very specific directions for each component of the class work. Now, what I'm trying to do is help students understand that they have to take larger things, larger demands, projects, etc., and break them down into smaller chunks to get things done. And this is true for all my classes because all the classes are project-based and students have to learn how to manage a project. And that's complicated and that takes time. And so the blog structure mimics them having to focus on one thing at a time. In the first few weeks, even a month, it can be challenging for the students to understand what I'm asking. And as they start to understand that they have to look at one part of the blog post per you know, chunk of time to get accomplished, they can then start to get their own process um, developed. Okay, now let's get into this. I'm going to show you this one in more detail, but first, we are working on getting things done this week. And the idea is that students are not great tacticianers of managing their time. And I'm trying to help them with that because again, like I said, they have to be able to manage a project and working with other people. And that is some pretty well, some pretty high level skills development that they need to work on. And this process that we go through is getting them ready for that. And the project we did last week was related to 
uh, logic, flowcharts, and coding in the game design class. But you'll notice at the top here, and I, you know, it's kind of small, but I'll, I'll zoom in. The name of the blog post highlights the week and the theme for the week. The week before that was tools, time, and rooms. And I'll explain more about the rooms here in a moment. Then a previous week, we had developing quality workflow. And then before that, we had recipe for success. Who is good at doing stuff according to the student's perspective? Now, let me give you a rundown of the close-up detail of each one of these blog posts. So first off, what the students do, and I'll just kind of go through this, is they copy this whole thing right here. I'm going to pretend here. They copy this. They do control click uh, or control C or command C uh, to copy this into their blog. Once they've done that, then they can edit each one of these, you know, they can edit the whole thing. So I'm going to, um, there we go. I'm going to zoom in now so you can see it up close. In fact, I'm going to go a little closer. There we go. And now we're going to scroll down through the process of focusing on one thing at a time. That's really, again, what I'm trying to drive home here. So the students have to read the directions, copy and paste all the contents below. We just did that. And imagine we just did that. Then they follow the, the directions here. Title the blog post this. If they want to place their own image at the top of the blog post, I have a video tutorial on how to do that. They don't have to, it's optional. The next thing below that is sample work. I highlight students' work that is completed early on in the project so that students can see what the expectations look like. In this particular project, I have over a dozen student samples that kids can look at so they can you know, geek off each other, as we like to say. When they're done following the directions for a section of the blog post, I have this direction, which is basically delete my directions and continue working. Here's the image that I put at the top that they can leave there. I did cite my source properly. And we are using the Creative Commons so that copyright is not an issue. And uh, as long as we cite our source, I usually have a quote at the top of the blog uh, to kind of give a framework for the work that we're going to be doing. And it's usually either inspirational or eye-opening. Uh, in this case, you can see this right here it does relate to understanding what we try to do in our class and getting things done. The summary is a section where they write uh, what they did for the week and they write this last. And basically what they do is um, delete my directions and then type the summary. They can write the summary above or below my directions and then delete my directions. But essentially, you're going to hear this over and over again. Read just this section. Do just this section, just the summary. Okay. And I'm, again, I'm trying to help kids focus on one thing at a time. And I'm watching week by week, more and more students are understanding that and able to follow those directions. And again, I'm feeling that they're being able to break down larger things into smaller chunks. I know that's the third time I've said that, but you can see that that is the main component of this class is how to wrangle that big stuff. Now, we use a concept of rooms. The rooms are imaginary. What we're trying to do is help the students set timers to focus their energy for that period of time on the concepts in this particular task. And using a concept of a room is another kind of mental trick to kind of think about being in a space. Like imagine walking into a classroom, set a timer, work on the task that is described here. In this case, it's only three minutes. What I want them to do is fill out the survey. Then they would just delete all these directions. Now, they can even delete this whole room uh, because we don't need it anymore. Some of the activities, some of these imaginary rooms are just there to prompt them to do something and then they can delete it when it's when they're done. Um, so I'm going to learn how to click here. I'm going to scroll down and there we go. Go to the next room. And we have a practice room where kids are learning skills, a particular skill, depending on the class, that is something tangible related to the world of work, whether it's learning how to play guitar, learning how to code, or learning how to run a camera. It's a specific skill set that is a technical skill. Um, in this particular room, they're learning how to run Getting Things Done by David Allen. And we broke it into three steps. First step was read these directions and they would be able to see that I want them to make a list of all the work they need to accomplish. When they're done, they would delete these directions. And what would remain here is a list of what they need to work on this week for all their classes, a to-do list. The next section, I wanted them to 
sort the list with the top thing that needs to be accomplished at the top of the list, and then in successive order have the remaining elements of the list, basically prioritizing their tasks. The third thing I wanted them to work on is to spend the rest of the week working for 45 minute intervals, working on classwork for all their classes, and taking a 15 minute break to get a drink of water, go for a walk, and rest their eyes. Look 20 feet away, blink 20 times, uh, do that at least every 20 minutes. So that's what this process was. And they could leave this information there or they could delete it if they wanted. Um, again, in the blog, I give very specific directions of what they want them to do in each one of these imaginary rooms. We even have an outside room. In this case, what I wanted students to do is to watch the first 30 seconds of David Allen explaining how getting things done works, then take a look at this chart and think about where they fall any given day or throughout the day, and how do we remain at the top of this chart? That's what I say right here. And then I want them to go for a walk for 15 minutes and think about it. And then again, to re delete my directions and so on. The next section in the blog was an optional article they could read if they wanted. And, you know, I, I introduced it down here. And what I'm explaining is everything I just said, which is set a time or 15 minutes. It's optional. And then go for a walk and think about it. Lastly, there's two sections that wrap up the work for the week. Each week, I want them to write a few sentences about what they learned and problems they solved throughout the week. And those problems could be in my class or it could be anything that has to do with managing their own life or, or a process of staying as happy as they can. Then lastly, fill out a survey. And this survey, they, I asked them, how was the content this week? Did they find that engaging? How was the process this week and how I wanted them to work on the material? They give me feedback on that each week and they do it on rating it on a one to five scale for both content and process but also they can write some stuff for each one of those uh, areas and give me feedback. And then lastly, they chart how much time they spent in each imaginary room. And that helps me understand what they like most about the class. And if I click on a previous week as an example, I'm going to zoom out here um, so you can see this a little bit better. The room concept Again, goes around a practice room where they learn a specific skill, classroom where they're learning about theory and analysis. Then we have the laboratory where they practice the theory and do some exercises. The outside, or I like to call it creativity room, where they learn more about the brain and they get physical and do something, and they learn something each, each week in that. We have a studio where they start learning the language or how to speak, as we like to say, with the particular skill sets they're learning. So in game design, making a game. In School of Rock, how to make a song. And in film, how to actually make a film. And then lastly, we have, um, and I don't have it on this week, we have usually a control room or editing room, and that's where we publish the work. In this particular week, we didn't have that room because we weren't publishing anything. And of course, we have the last two sections here, what they learned, problems they solved, and then the weekly uh, evaluation of the course. And that structure is represented each week. And that is essentially how the class functions. If you have any questions, please reach out to me and know that students can make up work in the past. They just go back into the folders and they can then watch the video for that particular project. And um, that is, you know, the intention is that if they can't get work done in a particular week, they have technology issues, that they could go back um, and find that information and go through that structure. And I'm going to show you this last thing and then I'll be done. So let's do um, an example here. If I clicked on week seven, there's a couple ways you can look at this. I'm going to click on it so that I can see all the contents revealed out. I embed the videos at the top and again, so that they can watch that. They can pause and rewind. I know I tend to talk a lot. Uh, my stuff seems complex. But what I'm trying to do is show them how to use the resources that they have to get the stuff done. So here's the overview video, and then here's the assignment that the students uh, would then follow. And again, if they hadn't finished this on time, we have target dates every Friday at midnight. Work is due for that week, but they could go back, finish the work for that particular week, then send me an email, and I will check the work. Well, if you have watched this up to this point, you get a merit badge. 
you get uh, something significant because you did it. Nice job. Way to learn the process of my class. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, let me know. Send me an email. Have a great day.